And what do, what do I tell the person who is too tired to go on? What do I tell the one who says, I'm too tired? God said, tell him, I got tired too. Jesus sat down in Samaria. That's where to talk to a woman. That's who. Ask him for water. That's what. But why? Because he was tired. Because he was fully God. Fully man. As much as we love to shout about his divinity, you know how we were a minute ago when I was setting you up about the great I am just to bring you back down so you could know that the same God who created you who was strong enough, who was powerful enough. Everybody thinks Jesus was weak. Raise your hand. Maybe, maybe being weary doesn't mean you're weak. Jesus, tired. Why was he tired? I didn't say who was he tired of. We already know it was Peter. <laughs> Come on, Peter. <laughs> Peter's fighting you at every turn, cussing and stuff in front of the press, having to bleep Peter out. You know, I know he was tired of the Pharisees. He couldn't wash his hands or not wash his hands. They followed him to every bathroom, every dinner. I know he was tired of them, but it says he was tired from the journey. Thinking about Jesus' journey, you know. They walked everywhere. <sighs> no Uber. No Uber Jesus, Uber Christ, Uber Savior. Three day walk from where they were baptizing through Samaria. Straight through was the shortcut, by the way. The direct route is sometimes the divine route. Instead of hiding the fact that you're tired, you just say, God. I'm tired. Somebody, somebody was yawning during my sermon one time, and I just got mad about it. I said, "How are you tired? You're not doing anything." You know, but I found out later they they uh, worked a night shift and came straight to church. It's kind of hard to understand someone if if you only see them at one part of their journey. And some people that we think are weak maybe are weary. Have you thought about that? That just because you're weary, it doesn't make you weak. How do you know that? Jesus, I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection. I am the door. I am the shepherd. I am the true vine. I am the way. At some point, six hours after they left that morning at noon, he said something we wouldn't expect to hear the Savior say, I am tired. This is the incarnation. I worship a God who is powerful enough to give me strength and who is human enough to get tired. And for some reason, this week, I felt that some of us needed to meet tired Jesus. I thought maybe you could relate to him, because his journey didn't really start with just leaving that morning. I mean, that's enough. Six hours that day. Six hours in one day. I mean, I got a six-hour drive coming up with my kids, and I'm downloading every episode of The Office on all of their phones, just hoping we can make it six hours, still be saved, still be married, still be healed, delivered, blessed, and one happy family. And that's a drive. Six hours. Because you leave at six, it's noon, it's hot, it's the heat of the day. Of course he's tired. And yet I wondered, was it only physical? 
or did he go through Samaria because he was tired of the way they were treating each other? Why was he tired? Why did he come? To abolish the barriers? Full of grace and truth, and we beheld his glory. His journey didn't start in Bethlehem. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. That's a long trip. From the sapphire seal of heaven to the dusty streets of Samaria, of course he was tired. Even youth will grow weary and stumble, but those who wait on the Lord… I'm waiting on God right now. I'm waiting. Somebody say, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. And I'm weary. And I'm not going to lie to you. I'm weary. I mean, this, this is getting old. And some of y'all want to cuss right now. Don't do it in the chat. They'll block you. But even in your mind, you're like, I'm sick of this. I am sick of this. I mean, that's, that's not an I am statement we read in the Bible, but that's what you're saying right now in your heart. I'm, I am what? I am sick of this. I am, I am sick and tired. I am tired of fighting battles. Now, the thing about me, some people say when they get tired, they start laughing. Not me. When I get tired, I get mean. How many of you, when you get tired, that's, that's why when you had to pull me out of the elevator in Australia and I was about to fight that guy after I preached? I mean, I had just finished giving the invitation, too. If you're here today, the Lord says, come. And that dude said something sideways to me, and my uncle taught me to hit him with his, your elbow if you can get close enough. And I was cocking the elbow, and Chunks pulled me back. He said, "You've been." I was jet-lagged. I had preached 23 times in, in four days. They were preaching me to death at Hillsong Church. I'm preaching, I'm, I'm preaching, 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 tired. And Chunks pulled me. I said, come on, you're too tired now, because when you get too tired, you start fighting battles that don't matter to distract you from the ones that do. That's just me. I start fighting everybody. I start fighting people that are trying to help me when I'm tired. So Jesus said, y'all go get lunch. I'm sitting here for a minute, because the ones y'all have been fighting against are the ones I came to save. He had to go through Samaria. He had to sit down. There was a woman coming who needed him. She didn't even know it. She had no idea who he was. He sat down because he was tired. I mean, you don't have to do anything right now. Just sit down and receive this word that the Son of God got tired. The Son of God got tired. I know you're Superman, and you're, you're mad at yourself because you can't always get it perfect. Perfection got tired. Faith doesn't prevent fatigue. It just gives me a place to sit. He sat by a well. Here's the important thing. What well do you sit by when you're tired? He said it was Jacob's well. You with me, son? He said it was Jacob's well. Joseph was given that well. By Jacob. A lot of what our kids learn comes from us. It's generational. Jesus sat down by that well. I, I think that's so appropriate to say at this moment in our nation. What wells are you digging for your kids to sit next to? A lot of what we're going through today is because of wells that were dug before we got here. Jesus sat by Jacob's well. Wait on the Lord. Now we see the Lord waiting on a woman. So I pictured this moment. I pictured me and you. And you got your coffee, and you're like, I'm, I'm drinking all the caffeine I can. I'm still tired. And I know you can watch a TED talk about you know when to go to bed and when to wake up and all that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about tired inside. I'm a soul doctor. 
I don't know anything about REM. I don't know anything about ergodynamic pillows. Did I say that right? I don't know anything about your mattress number. That is not my specialty. But I know that sometimes you've got to sit down by a real well. And listen to me, a lot of the places that we're sitting while we're tired are only making us more dehydrated. A lot of the places that we're drinking from are making us dumber, more fragmented, less whole, less informed. And this woman comes up. Now, picture it. She comes up at noon because she's sneaking away from all of the people who talked about her. She is a woman with a past. The last thing she wants to see is a man, specifically a Jewish man, specifically a rabbi. And Jesus says, Hey, can I get a drink? This is not a pickup line. This is not a pickup line. This is not a surface level question. This is Jesus asking this woman, Do you even know what's in you? I'm going to stand up now. I'm going to stand up now. Because I hear God saying to someone today, You don't even know what I put inside of you. What I have put inside of you is so great. Now, if you only see things on the surface, if you judge how people judge, you will never see what's inside. This was Jacob's well, but it was really just something for Jesus to sit on. When he sat on the well and asked the woman, Can I get a drink? He was not talking about H2O. Don't you get it? It's never about what we think it's about. It's always something deeper. So Jesus has showed up in this woman's situation, and I can't help but think it's for somebody today. You have been at your wits' end, and you thought I was going to give you a little pep talk, and you thought I was going to tell you, you know, get on with it and, and trust God and, and move forward and all these little cliches of faith. But I, I came to tell you, sit with him a little while. Sit with him a little while. Sit with him a little while. Sit with him and see who you really are. Sit with him a little while. I've been sitting, I'm just gonna confess to you, I've been sitting by the wrong wells a lot of the time. I've been depending on people to inform me about who I am. I've been depending on what I see with my eyes to tell me how it is. But there is a well that does not come from an external source, and you can't see the pipes. There is within you a spirit that is greater than whatever is going on around you. Greater is he that is in me. I'm trying to shout sitting down so you can know he sat on the well so she could see what was within her. And I believe God is revealing some things to us in this season. I believe God is revealing to his church in this season that he has made us for a time when the world is so divided, when he has made us for a time that the world is so apathetic. And he sat by the well. He sat by the well to talk to a woman who had had five husbands and was living with number six so she could know he was number seven. On the first day, God worked. On the second day, God worked. On the third day, God worked. On the fourth day, God worked. On the fifth day, God worked. On the sixth day, God worked. What do you do on the seventh? He sat down, not because he needed rest, but because she did. And that's what I love about a God who will not only fight for me and walk with me and talk with me. But God said to tell you this week, He is the God who will come through 41 generations and go through Samaria just to sit with you. Just to sit with you. Sit with Him for a minute. He might show you something that is within you that nobody else noticed. This woman had been passed around like the jar that she carried to the well that day. She knew what it was to feel used. Did he sit down at the well that day because he was tired? Or 
because she was. You're tired of being used by people. You're tired of being manipulated by people. Sit with me. Because I'm not seated where you're seated. When I sit with him, he has seated me with him in heavenly places, far above every ruler and principality. You say, I'm tired. God said, me too. I'm, I'm tired of seeing how, how, how people treat one another too. I'm tired of the injustice too. That's why I came in the form of a man so that I could be what man could never be. I came to hang on a cross and say, it is finished so that you can rest. I know we got work to do. But can we sit for a minute? Can we just sit with him for a minute? By the well that will never run dry. Some of us passed E a long time ago. The tank has been empty a long time. So God says, I want you to sit with me. When you sit with me, you will see with me. When you sit with me, who is this for? Just, just raise your hand right now in the room. Raise your hand in the chat. Say, this is for me. I want to sit with him. I want to sit by the well that has living water. I want to sit away from the streams that are poisoned by the prejudice of men. I want to sit with him for a minute. And Jesus, tired as he was, said to his disciples, y'all go get some food. I've got to get a harvest. Now, I believe God sent me to preach this message to somebody today who is tired on the inside. And no amount of sleep, no amount of Netflix and numbing it, and no amount of pacing the floors is going to solve it. And I believe God brought you into his presence today for a reason. And I think he woke me up at 3, three in the morning this night, the night before, the night before, so that I could feel a little bit physically while I preach this how you've been feeling before we got here. How Jesus felt was how the woman felt. Even youth will grow tired and weary, and young men will stumble and fall, but they that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. And God said, even if you don't have the patience to wait for me, I'm waiting for you. When you are tired, you must be very careful that you do not become dehydrated. You have got to drink this water. You have got to drink this word. You have got to drink this worship. You have got to move away from wells that will never quench your thirst, and you have got to receive the water that flows from within. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the reason that you came to church today is God wanted to give you water. He knows you're tired. He knows you're thirsty. He hung on a cross and said, I thirst too. He stretched his arms this wide because he was tired of it too. And the man who was God became man, and he who knew no sin became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. And he said to the woman, and he said to me, and he said to you, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection. I am the light. I am the shepherd. I am the gate. I am the way. I am the vine. I am the seventh man. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.